The American Hockey League is the preeminent minor league hockey league in North America, and presumably the world. Each of the 32 teams is affiliated with an NHL team. But of course they have their very own arenas. Well, most do. Let's check them out. Total Mortgage Arena, Bridgeport Islanders. Somehow, this venue has been featured on the channel at least twice before. It's home to an NBA G League team, so it was in that video, and I think it was in another video as well. Anyway, the most distinctive aspect of this arena is the lighthouse on the outside, but the interior does have a little bit going on. Premium seating wraps its way around the entire lower tier and makes up the majority of seating at this end. Bojangles Coliseum, Charlotte Checkers. There is actually a fast food chain called Checkers. The synergy would have been perfect if they held the naming rights, but I think Bojangles looks a little bit better to be honest. Uh, this domed arena with its tin roof has had a bit of a topsy-turvy history, opening in the 50s, closing down in the 80s, coming back to life after a refurb, tenants coming and going, but the checkers have been here for the last seven years or so. And it looks like this old place still has some life left in it. XL Center, Hartford Wolfpack. XL in name, XL in nature. Well, maybe it's not extra large, but as far as minor league hockey arenas go, this is certainly on the upper end when it comes to capacity. It's not all that pretty on the outside, but I quite like the interior. The seating layout in particular. Not only is it very steep, making for an intimidating atmosphere, but it just looks good. Other than some dated aspects to the exterior, you can't really tell this place was built in the 70s. Giant Center. Giant in name, not quite giant in nature. It's big enough though. This is the home of the Hershey Bears, and Hershey is of course the home of Hershey. And I would just like to give a shout out to the people that run the Hershey company. I would never have thought that selling wax replicas of chocolate bars would be financially viable. But they do it, day in day out. They're convincing replicas too. I've even seen people try to eat them. As for the arena itself, well, it's a fairly standard venue. I am glad the seats are chocolate coloured, that's a nice touch. The Hershey Bears colours are chocolate, tan, white and cocoa after all. PPL Center, Lehigh Valley Phantoms. It's interesting how the arena is kind of boxed in by other buildings. They were all built as part of the same project. What little exterior there is is quite basic, but there is a rather elegant looking entrance, and that elegance is carried over to the interior. The asymmetrical seating layout with an upper deck on one side and a couple of balcony levels on the other is looking pretty clean. The cream coloured walls were an interesting choice, but it works. Amica Mutual Pavilion, Providence Bruins. This place gets the nickname of The Dunk. That may seem puzzling, but it was named after Dunkin Donuts for a couple of decades. It is now of course named for Amica Mutual, manufacturers of insurance. There's not all that much to say about the design. It's very simple with its symmetrical all black seating bowl, but at least it's been kept up to date over the years. Mass Mutual Center, Springfield Thunderbirds. Wait, that's not the Springfield from Family Guy, is it? Much like the Dunk, other than the main entrance, it has a rather uninspiring exterior. As for the interior, well, although it's quite small, it's made up of a very compact single tier of seating. When you combine that with the low ceiling, it must make for an enhanced atmosphere. Not too bad at all. Mohegan Sun Arena at Casey Plaza. Wilkes Bear Scranton Penguins. That really doesn't roll off the tongue in the same way that Pittsburgh Penguins does. Geez, there's certainly no shortage of parking here. Once inside, you're greeted not with tarmac, but a whole lot of bare concrete on show. 
which gives this place a slightly cold industrial feel. But I kind of like that aesthetic. And I suppose it's fitting considering that the Scranton area is quite industrial from what I understand. Although the paper industry is not what it used to be. CAA Arena, Belleville Senators. Speaking of industrial, this appears to be a factory that manufactures lug nuts for trucks and other large vehicles. The interior is a lot brighter, partially due to the white beams up there. You don't often see that. The eagle-eyed amongst you may even notice that they use the lug nuts that were manufactured in-house. Odd choice. Another interesting aspect is that rather than a connected seating bowl, there are three distinct stands, so to speak, and then these three rows of corner seating. Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, Cleveland Monsters. When I mentioned this arena in the NBA video a while back, I suggested that it had a Karen haircut. Since the arena didn't make an official complaint against the channel, I will rescind that statement. It's clearly not a Karen. Being an NBA arena, you'd expect it to have top-notch amenities, and it does. This huge video board, known as the Humongatron, is the biggest in the AHL. Which I suppose is not that surprising, because it's one of the biggest arenas in the league. Place Bell, Laval Rocket. I was a little confused by the name Place Bell, but then I remembered that people in Quebec, French speak. Not all of them French speak, some of them English speak. But people that French speak put words in order different. Either way, all languages welcome are at place bell speak. Gibberish aside, I really like this arena. The design is clean and simple both inside and out. With its white facade and navy blue seats, it matches the Que... Que... Quebexican flag? Quebexican? Blue Cross Arena at the War Memorial. Rochester Americans. Wow, a team made up exclusively of Americans. I mean, it's your choice, but good luck winning a championship without any Sri Lankans on your team. This nearly 70 year old venue first hosted the Rochester Royals, now known as the Sacramento Kings of the NBA. But the Americans moved in the year after, and have been here ever since. It has of course been renovated since the 50s, but there are some reminders of the past, like the quirky layout in this section, as well as the wooden armrests. Although the wooden armrests are almost certainly not original. Upstate Medical University Arena. Syracuse Crunch. That definitely sounds like a dance move. This is an even older building than the last one, having opened in the late 40s but it was renovated just recently, so despite the beautiful old school exterior, it's looking fairly new on the inside. However, once more, if you look closely, there are some signs of its age, such as the stage at one end, which I believe was somewhat common in the old days. If you're lucky, you might even see someone perform the Syracuse Crunch up there. Coca-Cola Coliseum, Toronto Marley's, they just keep getting older. This beautiful building is a centurion. However, it wasn't a hockey arena until the 2000s. It was mostly used for horse shows and moose rodeos, or whatever it is Canadians do other than hockey. Yeah, moose rodeos mostly. I knew it. Despite its unconventional history, it doesn't deviate too far from a standard ice hockey arena on the inside. Adirondack Bank Center, Utica Comets. Is Utica where they call hamburgers steamed hams or is that more of an Albany expression? This venue is notable for its unique roof. Not only does it look like a coin or something, but it was one of the first cable supported roofs of its kind. Something that is quite noticeable from the inside. It looks quite similar to Madison Square Garden come to think of it, which obviously came later. New York City has always been one step behind Utica, or uh, this does have the smallest capacity in the league. Allstate Arena, Chicago Wolves. I'm loving the variety to the exteriors in the AHL. This too has a distinctive roof, 
It's not a groundbreaking cable supported design, but it's made of timber. This is due to the fact that it's located near an airport, and the wooden roof helps reduce the noise from planes flying overhead. Those pilots can be so obnoxious with their loud music. Not to mention all those burnouts they do in the Walmart parking lot. Uh, anyway, I really like this venue. Van Andel Arena, Grand Rapids Griffins. This place has a very similar exterior design to Mohegan Sun Arena. I'm mainly talking about that huge rounded glazed facade that spectators are greeted with upon entering the venue. Well, that's pretty much it actually. The interior is fairly straightforward for the most part, but the one end with hardly any seating is quite interesting. Not only does it have the additional video board, but the wall kinda reminds me of the front of the hull of a navy ship. Kinda. Wells Fargo Arena. Iowa Wild. I quite like the name Wild for a team, it's much better than the Iowa Domesticated, which was the alternative option. Considering the population of Des Moines isn't all that big, they have themselves a fantastic arena. NHL quality, I suppose. Three sides of the arena are the same multi-tier design that you see at most NHL venues. But because it's a little smaller, one side is a little different. There are no upper tiers, but there are some big windows back there letting in some natural light during the day. Canada Life Centre, Manitoba Moose. Interesting that they've named themselves after just one moose, and not several meese. Canada Life Centre has an interesting inspiration behind its design. The plentiful use of red brick is an homage to a famous department store that previously occupied the site. This too is of NHL standard because it's also home to the Winnipeg Jets of the NHL. You know, from what I hear about Winnipeg, they've probably got a giant furnace under the rink to keep the ice from overfreezing, if that's even a thing. UW Milwaukee Panther Arena, Milwaukee Admirals. If you're a baseball fan, you might notice the similarity between this and the Brewers Stadium. Well, my question is, have you ever seen them in the same place at the same time? It's the same person. I believe they might both be inspired by the old-timey train stations of Milwaukee, but don't quote me on that. It's kind of weird how the arena is named after a college basketball team that also plays here. But I suppose that's better than being named after an insurance manufacturer. This interior is unique, but not in any flamboyant way. I quite like it. BMO Center, Rockford Ice Hogs. It gets the nickname the Big Orange Box, largely due to it being a big orange box. Ironically, it looks like a black box flight recorder. See, identical. Less so on the inside, it's just another hockey arena. I do like the mix of blue and yellow seats, which perfectly reflect the Ice Hogs colors of red, white, and black. What else can I say? Uh. The lower tier of seating is retract retractable. Yeah. HEB Center at Cedar Park, Texas Stars. The exterior is a mix of stone and glass, two materials that famously don't get along, but they're working together nicely here. Inside we have a small upper deck of premium seating wrapping its way around the entirety of the main seating bowl. And it's not something I talk about too often, but there are plenty of options to choose from when it comes to food at this venue. Including a very exotic establishment, from Italy I believe. I'm not sure on the pronunciation, but they do pizza mainly. Abbotsford Center, Abbotsford Canucks. This is just a stone's throw from the US border. In fact, I believe if you were to stand on the roof of the arena, you could actually see the wall. Yeah, that one there. Beautiful wall. Inside we have a very compact, clean and green seating bowl. Almost the same as the last one with that low ceiling as well. It's nothing flashy, but it's more than adequate. And that's the Abbotsford Way. 
Mechanics Bank Arena, Bakersfield Condors. Oh boy. We've done like 20 or so arenas and there's still plenty to go. I think I'm just going to sit this one out. What the heck? This juice has got rosemary in it. Lingonberry, cranberry and rosemary. Mmm. It's good though. Oh wow, the rosemary accents the juice in such a way that... Okay, no. Scotiabank Saddle Dome, Calgary Wranglers. This would have to be the most distinctive exterior in the league. If you didn't pick up on it already, it's called the Saddle Dome because it looks like a saddle. Kinda. But if you dig deeper, you see that the real reason for this shape is a donation of $2 million made to the Calgary government in 1980. But who else other than Pringles? They're trying to brainwash you into buying Pringles. Don't be a sheep. Do your own research. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> that design isn't purely for the distinctive aesthetic. It also reduces the volume of the interior, which saves a lot of money in heating. Oh, I should also mention that this has the largest capacity in the league. Akroshaw Arena, home of the Coachella Valley Firebirds, is comfortably the newest arena in the league. In fact, it's probably the newest in the country, having opened a matter of days ago at the time of writing. It has a beautiful exterior, and the interior follows suit. There's no center-hung video board, which oddly enough is the same with the Seattle Krakens Arena. And that's the NHL team they're affiliated with. The Krakens have a double off-center arrangement, here, there is just a huge wide screen at one end. It's effective nonetheless. Budweiser Event Center, Colorado Eagles. Overall, the exterior has a classy look to it, although that is somewhat spoiled by the Budweiser branding. I thought for a second there was some internal brickwork, which you don't see very often, but it's just burgundy paint. Either way, it does work well with those seats. Unsurprisingly, there is a lot of bar seating throughout the venue. And yeah, this place just seems very cozy. At least as much as a hockey arena can be. Dollar Loan Center, Henderson Silver Knights. Interestingly, the title sponsor is actually called Dollar Loan Center. That's the name of the company, which could cause a lot of confusion. Although I'm fairly sure the actual Dollar Loan Centers don't look like this. I'm loving the charcoal seats, especially with those hits of vibrant yellow from the Dollar Loan Center signage. I have already probably mentioned Dollar Loan Center enough already, but I just love their slogan. Don't be broke. That's genius. This will solve poverty. Toyota Arena, Ontario Rain. This is the third Ontario based team to make an appearance in this video albeit in a different country to the others. But as the old saying goes, you can take the Ontario out of the country, but you can't teach Ontario to fish. Uh, this place has a pretty spectacular exterior, as you saw. An angular rather than a curved seating bowl. And while it doesn't look like the hull of a navy ship, I do like this black and blue wall over here. Pachanga Arena, San Diego Gulls. From the outside, this is a fairly basic beige building. It is, however, over 50 years old, and in that time it's had innumerable tenants, including the San Diego Clippers, now LA Clippers of the NBA. Its heyday might be over, but it's still kind of going strong. The goals would be considered the main tenants, but there's also an indoor football, lacrosse, and soccer team that share it. It does perhaps look a little dated in here, though. Tech CU Arena, San Jose Barracuda. This is another venue that opened just this year. It's not quite as flashy as Akrashu Arena. They have kept the exterior pretty clean and simple, but I really like the hits of teal in keeping with Barracuda colors. You can't tell that it's not a very built up venue. It's the second smallest in the league as far as capacity is concerned, but also there's very little in the way of attached extras. 
It's all about the hockey here, and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. Tucson Convention Center, Tucson Roadrunners. From the outside, this one gives a real low profile, quite literally. That's largely due to its sunken seating bowl, which I suppose would help regulate the temperature. Tucson is hot, and from experience, ice tends to prefer being cold, otherwise it starts crying. It certainly has a very distinctive color scheme on the inside. I'm getting Buzz Lightyear vibes from it. That's probably not for everyone, but it's all right. So there you have it, the arenas of the American Hockey League, and also Canada is involved. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, have a good one.